All right, let's take an overview of this giant team. There are some question marks as a new offensive coordinator in Ben McAdoo. How did the offense look today with Eli Manning running that offense? I tell you what, it looks sharp. You can tell they've been working pretty hard in all in, uh, in all season, in OTAs, in many camps. The biggest difference is tempo. You can see the guys in and out of the huddle, a uh, little sugar huddle they call it, right at the line of scrimmage where they just turn around. Eli gives them a call, they're right back to the line of scrimmage, and the ball is being snapped. So. Uh, nothing like the Oregon or Chip Kelly offense of the Philadelphia Eagles, but it is a very fast, up tempo offense, something we have not seen from the New York Giants. Do you think Eli, who is not fleet of foot, although he is elusive, is he the type of quarterback that can run this offense? Uh, I think so. He has to get used to it. And he has to understand that the ball has to come out quick. A lot of three- and five-step drops today, you saw that. A lot of shorter routes. Uh, it's not the progression route concept tree that – uh, Kevin Gilbright had with that offense. Uh, a lot of bubble screen, a lot of slants. Again, a quick passing game. So for Eli, it's all about recognizing what the defense gives you and then making the correct throw on time and on point because there's no adjustments. You don't see a lot of uh, option routes coming from this offense. So the key thing I think is what's great about it is they have the weapons on a wide receiver standpoint to run this offense with Cruz, Beckham, and Randall. you got guys that can get a lot of yak for you right after the catch. Now, it's interesting. We had Ron Jaworski on yesterday. He listed Eli as number 11, he said, because he had a terrible, terrible season. Now, we also had Chris Snee on yesterday, who retired. He said the reason Eli had a bad year is because of the offensive line. He never threw us under the bus, but you can't be a good quarterback from your back. Do you think Eli just had a bad year, or was it because of the offensive line? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I think some decisions that Eli did make throwing the football was on him. But at the end of the day, I mean, you're right. He was under the rest throughout the whole entire season. Uh, also add on the fact that he had receivers at times running the wrong routes. Uh, just a just a, a group of things together. No running game. They were 29th in rushing last year. So you're playing uh, third and long, third and 15. That's not going to help your quarterback, especially when you're struggling as a team with confidence to make the play. So, and, and I agree with Chris, uh, with Chris Lee. He's not going to throw anybody underneath the bus, the offensive line, but they were terrible last year, and that's why you saw so many changes this year. Is there a chance, though, Antonio, and so much rides on this, that is this the beginning of the downside of Eli's career, or do you still see many more good years ahead? He's 33 years old, amazingly enough. Well, I think the, the great part about it is he has a lot of talent around him. It's not like he has to work with uh, guys who are uh, are still up and coming. You know, you got a crew, you got a star in Victor Cruz. Uh, Ruben Randall could be a star in this league. If he gets his mind right and understands this scheme and this offense, he can put up big numbers this year, and you have another playmaker in Beckham. So, uh, they are young as far as in, in better, better in leadership as far as standpoint of how much that they play. But, uh, you know, you look at Eli, the ball comes off the same way. The ankle was not an issue today. He wasn't limping. Uh, there was another noticeable thing that, you know, he's coming off an of ankle surgery. So uh, I think for all of us, you know, when you get to 33, you know, it is towards the downside of your career. But how do you maintain your body and your health and how you take care of yourself is what's key. All right, let's go to the other side of the ball because there's a lot of questions there, especially on the defensive line. What did you see today from JPP? So much is riding on him. He looked healthy. He looked uh, actually like how he did two years ago, in better game shape, especially for training camp coming in. I'm sure that he weighed in and did great on his condition tests from what I heard. Um, but you know what? The thing that we need for JPP is that energy, that, that, that passion, that hard work, that desire that determination to get to the ball carrier or the quarterback by all means necessary. And if he can get back to that and be in that dominant force, it makes it so much easier for the other guys because he's going to demand two, three blockers at a time to try to block them. So if a guy like DeMontre Moore, Matthias Kiwanuku, whoever's on the other end, they should be freed up to make and be more productive this year. Talking to Coach Coffin, that was his number one concern. Who's going to take some of load off of JPP? It can't just be a one-headed monster. John Beeson obviously is not able to practice right now. How much is that going to hurt the Giants? How much do they need him in there? No, they need John Beeson. You can see the impact he had uh, by being plugged in middle of the season last year, leading the team tackles, being that spark plug, being the heart and soul of the defense, and being that communicator for the defense. Antrell Rowe does a great job, but it's hard to come from the back end down to the defensive line and communicate. So uh, when they get him back and looking at him today, he's in great physical shape. It's just about getting him out there and not rushing him because you want him for the full 16 games, not just for a few. Rodgers Cromartie, what's he going to mean to this team? Yeah, I think the first true number one cornerback that we've had in New York in a long time. Uh, big, tall, rangy, speedy wide receiver. Uh, great ball skills. You see that with the 19 interceptions, five touchdowns in his career. 
Uh, he gives the Giants somebody that they haven't had in a long time. We say, all right, look, you go in, you handle your side, and we'll worry about the rest. Now, I'm not saying he's going to be a shutdown corner, but he can go head to the head with a lot of number one wide receivers and take them out of their game. So it'll be very interesting to see how the Giants use him, how he comes along in Terry Fields' defense, but all the attributes are there. We're talking with Antonio Pierce, our ESPN NFL analyst. Antonio, you've been with that team when they, when, the, when they won a Super Bowl. They have not made the playoffs four of the last five years. The thing that gets them through it, that one of those years they won a Super Bowl. Do you sense stress around this team? Is there a must-win this year sort of feeling around that team today? I think so. When you see the amount of changes, uh, almost half of the roster changed and new guys coming in. When you fire the officer, court, or the officer coordinator retires and you change that staff up, um, the next thing to go is the head man. And as as the, the numbers that he's put up with a prior Hall of Fame-type career with Coach Coughlin, at the end of the day, it's about production. If you don't uh, make the playoffs four out of five years, ownership's not going to go for that. And, again, Super Bowls are great, but you want to do it consistently and have an opportunity to get to the dance, and that's the playoffs. And I think the Giants understand it, and I think it's a good change for them to have a new offensive coordinator bringing a different approach. I'll even give you an example. At the beginning of practice, only uh, the guys go through a walk-through period where it's more teaching and at a slower pace. Today it was almost like a three-quarter speed jog through. I mean, they were moving. They were trying to get 20 to 25 snaps in about a 10-minute period. So just having uh, McAdoo in there just in the last several months has already changed how the Giants practice, and hopefully that translates to the field. Now, do you sense anything different about your, your former coach? He's 68 years old now. Does, do you think he still has the fire? Is he motivated? Yeah, uh, he still got the fire. Talking to him, I mean, heck, the guy's still up 5.30 in the morning working out, beating all the coaches and players in the gym. Uh, you can hear him on the field, and I was pretty far off the set. Uh, and you can still hear him loud. You can see his body, his body language, his demeanor, and just talks to him, smiling, happy, excited. I mean, the guy's 68 years young. And I don't think he'll find too many coaches at 68 with that kind of energy that he has.